All right, so welcome everybody. My name is Craig Blanchett. I know Alex, um, I had, uh, I had to get my camera working. Um, my house is in a little bit of disarray from, all, from the move, but uh, we're happy to be here. Um, uh, this morning I'm going live on Facebook, so you might be seeing uh, messages in uh, Facebook. But um, yeah, this is our health coach huddle. We do this every Friday. and. Uh, we start off with the Take Shape for Life University, and we got some great calls uh, we're going to be covering today on that. And then um, after we get through with the the general, uh, you know, healthy support section, um, we're going to move into uh, some more of a deeper discussion um, about beating yourself up versus and the comparison and what's healthy comparison and what's unhealthy comparison and uh, that will pertain to not only our personal lives and our personal program but also to our um, our health coach practices and uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about um, a, a fun tool that we can use that will help us really see um, where we're at and where we want to be and so um, anyway it's my uh, privilege to host this uh, call each week and so if you if you're watching this live of course you can you can tune in through the podcast um, subscribe to it and that the podcast is available through any podcast player you just search for uh, team Blanchett and then uh, you'll be able to find that you can also watch these on Vimeo subscribe to my Vimeo channel and uh, we'll have a health coach huddle um, channel and then it's also on YouTube so you can get these later uh, I, I one thing I was talking to Linda Benson about yesterday. It was, um, yeah, it was Linda. It was a couple coaches that I was speaking with yesterday, and uh, one of the interesting things that we talked about is that the people watching people change over time has been such an amazing thing, and the people that stay around, um, even through the ups and downs seem to be the ones that are making it personally with their own health goals and also professionally. And um, uh, so it's, it's not that we don't all have ups and downs, but some people get into our program and they jettison out and we don't really know if they're successful or not. It's most of the time when we see them later, they're not. And so the assumption is what's really going to keep you going. Um, so anyway, that's great stuff. Um, I also wanted to say, uh, let's see here, Robert, I've seen you before, Robert, but just refresh our memory as to who invited you, uh, where you're from, and tell us something something about your health journey that you're excited about, right as, I, right as he muted his camera. Are you there, Robert? Maybe he needed to run somewhere. I see Elise is driving somewhere. Hey, hey. <laughs> she, uh, you pe people on your team, Alex, uh, have their camera where you have it when you drive too. So you, you, uh, I see it up on your dashboard there. So it's <laughs> it's a common uh, angle. So, um, all right. Well, good morning. Do you have any um, any highlights there, Alex? You wanted to toss out as we welcome the team. Yeah, it's been exciting. Uh, I've learned a lot this month, and. From everything that happens, and I know this meeting right here is a point uh, for us to come together and reflect on what's going well, what's next, what can we do to move our life forward, our health forward, our success forward, but also to help others do the same thing. And um, you know that teaming up piece is so powerful, Craig. You really hit it on the head when you said it's the people who stick through the ups and the downs that really found themselves, um, it's so easy to want to show up when things are going great. And I really encourage all anybody who's listening to this to show up even when it's not feeling so great. Uh, condition your brain to know how to be consistent. Um, and that's all a state of mind, good or bad, right? It's all about how we're perceiving that. There's a lot of things I'm sure, this is the last thing I want to say on this. There's a lot of things I'm sure in your life you thought were bad or were happening at the moment. And then in hindsight, you realized it was one of the best things that ever happened for you. So uh, that's my thought for this meeting is let's go ahead and uh, connect today to truly um, encourage each other and then see where we can do to up, up it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, we're going to actually go into that a little bit um, in our discussion. 
Um, so the uh, I I listened to this morning. I turned on the podcast um, and went through all the habits of health ones, and I had listened to all those, or they've been reviewed recently on our huddle here. And so I went back to Jan Paxman on September nineteenth, and uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that particular one. Um, I wanted to see was anybody else that they listened to a podcast. Um, and uh, have some feedback that they'd like to share with us before I get into mine. Anybody else? Awesome. What I what I find, and one of the reasons that encouraged me to listen to the call, is I've been moving this whole week, so I I haven't had time to line up people to um, present uh, one of the calls, and so I said, well, I know that I need to have something for this morning. So I'll go ahead and listen to one. And the uh, benefit of that is that I listened to one. The reasons why I did it is because I wanted to have something to share here. But the value to me is that I listened to it, and that, now that's something I have. And so one of the neat things is, is um, oftentimes the things that are kind of mundane and regular – we won't do for ourselves, but we'll do it as a favor to somebody else. I, I listened to this call as a favor to the call, this call this morning, to all of us, but I'm the one that benefited from it. And so I just, I wonder how we can think about that if we always, everyone listened to a, at least one podcast every week, so everybody had something to share, right? And um, uh, that way we would, I wouldn't have to, necessarily um, pick somebody out to actually uh, go through the motions on that we would just always have somebody there ready to share because and the benefit side benefit is that we're all actually getting that for ourselves so um, so I'm going to go into this topic and we'll kick this one around a little bit uh, this the the habits of health on September 19th Jan Paxman she's a, a nurse registered nurse and um, actually there's Robert again before we um, jump into that, let me just jump over to Robert. And uh, Robert, who invited you? Uh, oh, it looks like his video is, no, he's not frozen. So um, if you can unmute yourself, Robert, and just, uh, I know some of the folks may not have seen you here. I think I've seen you here before. Who invited you? And tell us a little bit about your, your uh, habits of health story. Oh, uh, looks like he's still having some technical problems. All right. So back to the call. Welcome to Robert. <laughs> so um, one of the things that Jan brought on is Jan, um, Jan Paxton, she's a, she's a nurse, super neat lady. She's, she loves the challenges, so she's involved in the challenges as well and uh, creating content. And uh, she brought on her health coach. And it was, it's really cool. It's almost like you're bringing on your parent, you know, your your uh, a special person in your life that actually helped you to get started on the program. And so it's, I knew Jan really well, but I didn't know her coach. And, um, and then her coach's coach is Kim Fisk. So, and I know Kim, so I, I knew the, the, the two bookends, but I didn't know the person in the middle. And so what was really neat about that particular um, call is he came on and he just talked about how he got involved with his program and how he came alongside um, Jan as just as a friend and, and was like, she was noticing how great he was doing. And she said, he, he goes, uh, well, um, I love this uh, program so much and, and, and just, I'm glad that I know about it now because I didn't always know about it. And do you know anybody else that might be like me? And, he, and she said, me. And so he became a client. It was just so, um, his terminology and the way that he spoke about the program was seemed to be, it wasn't, it wasn't coaches, right? It was just really simple stuff. And then um, uh, they talked really just about why our program is different than some of these other programs. And um, uh, that, um, uh, the question is, who could you help if they knew how great this was? And so when you have clients that are tell, talking to you and they're saying how great this program is and how great they're feeling, a, a simple question is, is who 
um, who could you help if they knew how great this program was? You know, and then they'll start thinking of people. It's like, well, let's talk to those people because maybe together, you know, I can coach them or we can coach them, right? And uh, because bottom line is if, if people don't start, then they don't start. And one of the things they don't start is feeling better, right? Or having hope that, they're, that they can actually achieve a healthy weight and stay there. Um, another one is uh, she said no other program has the things that our program has. And um, uh, so what I wanted to toss, I wanted to toss that question out to you guys, not to give me an answer that you think is the right answer or the answer I'm looking for, but why is that actually true? That, that our, why is our program unique and what's the value of that uniqueness? Do you really get that? So let's take a minute in here and, and just talk about that for a minute. We talk about how our program is different and unique with others, but if we don't really understand or grasp why it is um, or the reasons why it is, we might be missing something. Who wants to jump in and, and uh, share on that one? The biggest thing that's different is our community. So we have everybody who has walked not exactly the same journey, but pretty close to the same journey. And we can bounce off of each other. We can um, iron sharpens iron. So we can help each other along the way. If we have a bump in the road, then somebody else who has walked that journey can help us through that bump. And so that's one thing that I've talked to my clients about is that it's not just about the program and the five and one. It's about having all of these other people behind you and even the Facebook community page you can go in and you can say, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And you have all of these people who are willing to help you walk mm -hmm. through that. So I think that's an integral part of what's different in our program versus just a diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you might have a little bit of community in some other programs and that community might be around sort of a buying club. It's not really a community. It's just we go to this one place and buy our stuff every week, right? But, um, or sometimes you'll have a workout program where you get together and you exercise together. And so there, there's, the, the interesting thing about some other programs do have some levels of community, but they don't have all of the, 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 the recipe that we have, right? Where we have um, uh, that one-on-one -on -one coach and then also the community that goes with it. So you get very specific um, help. Uh, one of the things I was talking with Linda Benson yesterday, and she has a, a girl named Lauren, a client of hers, and Lauren's hosted, uh, she's been on here and, and um, reviewed one of our calls before, and uh, we were just talking about why our program, what's the number one thing we can do to um, hedge our bets for our future health? And we talked about that. And, and the, it is about the community that we keep. So um, that's it there. How about you, Linda? What do you think, um, uh, Linda Leanne? Do you have any um, personal, anything else to add to that as far as why our program differs and exceeds where others fail? Linda G? No? Yes? You do? Oh, let me unmute you. There you go. Good morning. Uh, yeah, being the uh, lifelong weight loss queen, tried you know everything out there under the sun. Um, it's just amazing that it's been what 14 months now, and I'm not you know 100% perfect, but I can. It's like we're talking about. It's this. It's the community that makes our program stand out and it's, it's not about the weight loss, it's about the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, yeah, great. Good job. Yeah, good job. Who else, how about you Elise? What is in your time here with this program, what are you, what are you noticing that is such a value or a personal benefit for you? Um, I really think it's the habits that they focus on. Um, I can count calories. 
I, you know, I can Google what the best thing to eat is and things like that, but it's actually retraining the habits that got me to my unhealthy place, which I find the most important. And, um, when we have a habit that we're trying to overcome and replace, like you can't just say, Oh yes, I'm going to do that. You need to have a plan and a way to do that. And that's what I love about this program is it, it shows you those habits that need to be replaced, but also teaches you how to start doing so. So that's really good. And actually that was one of the things they talked about in the program. <clears throat> and I want to talk about this too, is that, um, as we, <clears throat> we fight to make our habits and then our habits fight for us. Think about that. And this is what, what Jan's coach said is, is he had built these habits and then he, you know, he's been, I think, what was it? 2009, maybe, you know, it's been a long time since he's maintained a good healthy habit and he goes to parties and he goes to different events where they have cake and different things and he just knows uh, <clears throat> he's built these habits that are strong now and they are now fighting for him I'd love to have a little discussion about um, if you've seen that in your own life um, as you've gone to as you're building a habit and as um, the habits that you've built to see how they fought for you. Anybody have an example of that in their life? <clears throat> I know Carrie stepped away here and there's a few people on mute. Um, hey, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. You know, hi, Alex. Yeah, so one of the areas where specifically me fighting to create a habit has now been fighting for me is this group. Um, being around you all was not a habit for me in the beginning. Um, my natural style of my way my brain thinks is it likes new and fresh. So I'm always looking for new people and talking to new. That's just who I am. It's like I'm always looking for something exciting and new. So committing to a group where it was the same people that I might be talking to was really tough in the beginning and I was really inconsistent. Um, but I wanted to become a more consistent person and Craig helped coach me to do that. I asked him for support and accountability and I had to fight for it. I mean, oh my goodness, there'd be weeks where he'd be texting me, didn't hear from you. Hey, he missed you on the Friday meeting. You know, you said you really wanted that. You said you really wanted to be accountable to being around people and being a stable force in their life. You know, you still want that. Remember that Craig? Yeah. Oh yeah. This went on for a long time and it took probably all of six months before I was consistent. And uh, it's now, it's really hard for me to miss a meeting. <laughs> Extreme, like my brain doesn't, it fights for me to be here. Mm -hmm. My wife is in the hospital, I still show up on the meeting while she's in the hospital, but if I can, if I go camping, I still show up unless the internet dies. That's mm -hmm. an example. Yeah, that's and it served me, it served me so well, hearing you guys showing up, and back to what Elise was saying, um, my, my favorite thing about this program is the people. Uh, and the lives changing and that refires me up. So there's my habit fight. Yeah, that's good. Daniela, you have something all on you there. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> so what I was thinking about as everybody was speaking about these different things that um, that are highlights for them on their journey, I was thinking that to me one of the most unique aspects is really the combination that we have right? It's all of those things. Mm -hmm. Because if we took any one of them um, and isolated it, it's not enough. It's that whole combination. And then it brought me to reflect on my own journey, which is what, like four and a, four and a quarter years old now. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I personally struggled with to make consistent was um, exercise in my life. Not that I didn't do it, but I didn't do it consistently, and, and it wasn't something that um, I guess I had allowed myself the opportunity to fall in love with. And if not for being with people here, if not for my own personal health coach, just sort of gently checking in, um, or you know, when we're at convention together saying, hey, I'm going for a run, but I'll walk with you if you want to walk, because she knew I didn't run at the time. Um, just little encouragements like that. And then 
um, you know, other parts of mentorship, just sort of checking in and the challenge, checking in and my Habits of Health book, constantly reminding me about that. Um, the Habits of Health call, um, even the doctor's call had, you know, spoken about it. And it's not like I didn't know these things necessarily, but it's just that integration piece of all of those parts that has really helped me move forward, embrace that piece that really was missing and um, dedicate myself to making it consistent and having that finally be a win in my life. Um, so uh, just to share this. Yeah. thanks, Daniela. Yeah, Linda Benson, I know you have some, you've talked about the community in that piece and the value of that. Did you want to, do you have something to share with us today? I'll unmute you there. Sure. Go ahead. Um, good morning, everyone. You'll have to pardon this, whatever is happening this morning. <laughs> but like Alex, I can't not make it on. Um, it's too valuable. But, you know, it's, I was just talking to a client yesterday, and it's the, like what Daniela was saying, not only the variety of integrated pieces that we have and letting people take those on um, piece by piece at their pace because they're always accessible, right? It's not like, well, you have 30 days to tap into this support call or else now you have to start paying a fee. It's just really amazing. And I remember Alex talked about this, just the value or the pricelessness maybe of all of the pieces that we have, but the variety of people as well. And I remember I was, I was just so pumped about Craig as a client. And then I met, um, when the Preston box were still on, I met all of these women, Craig, you're not a girl. So there's some things I just can't relate to, to you about, right? But you get to see the hearts and just the variety of the people in the community. And it's like, wow, there is a ton of people doing all sorts of different, I mean, you've got a professional racer, you've got a trainer like Alex, and then you have stay at home moms and the integration of that is, I don't think you can find it anywhere else really. And the heart behind what people do and why they do it. Yeah. So that's what got my, that's what got Lauren's attention too. Yeah. I think that's one thing that we're, we're, um, what Daniela said, and it's the support is huge, right? And we see the yeah. value of the support here, but it's the combination. It's like, well, I really like cinnamon, you know, but it's the cinnamon connected with the other flavors and the textures that make that thing what it is. And yeah. so when you when you when you actually separate out one or two of the things, they're while they're great in themselves, they become a life changer together absolutely I love about like, that um, great yeah. great dialogue back and forth guys debbie did you have something you wanted to jump in yeah i did um i listened to the podcast yesterday because it was the same feeling that you were having that i just felt like i needed to do something and i'm constantly always trying to better myself as far as my health journey and reminding myself of the choices i want to make and one of the things that really in the beginning, um, I really enjoyed about this program was that you can make it what you want to make it. And that was the emphasis is it's your program. You can take it as far as you want or as yeah. little as you want. And um, we're here to, we're caring and sharing and we're not telling and share, you know, selling. Um, and so that was it gave me a chance to make my own choices on how much time I want to put into it and what I want to do. And I really appreciate that because everybody is still here for you. If you fall off and you, you know, have life happens and you're, you know, not able to make every meeting, but you come back and everybody's very accepting and here you are. It's glad to see you again. And just everybody knows here as far as the community that life happens. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I wanted to say about the podcast, one of the podcasts I listened to yesterday was, and you mentioned it about what people, um, you don't really know what happens when somebody just drops off. And, and um, the, the thing he was talking about is, oh my God, I'm starting to forget it. But basically it was about having grace with yourself 
when you do stumble or when you do disconnect for a little while that you don't beat yourself up. And these podcasts are just, I just love them because you always get a little tidbit of something that will help you on your journey or help you with a, a, a client and the I've got it on my monitor have grace because I have to tell that to myself sometimes that it's okay you know don't blow the whole day because you ate something that was not necessarily the healthiest choice but it's just one time and just have grace on yourself and move on and that's what I love about this program. yeah that's great can awesome. I add something real quick I'm so sorry mm. Craig I cut yeah, you okay. off Yes, Linda, go ahead. Yes. Okay. Uh, just on that point, what Debbie said, sometimes I have found that that's the biggest lesson that clients learn is how to have grace or how to not um, completely fall off their wagon if they've made a decision or a choice. And just that overcoming, the word overcome comes to my mind where they're learning to, it doesn't derail them as much anymore. It's not as much of an upset. Have you found that, Craig? And maybe we won't have to talk about that, but just that idea of kind of getting over it and continuing in the journey. Yeah. And does that yeah, make we're sense going to at all? Talk about, about um, beating yourself up. And actually that's a great transition into, um, you know, sometimes people say, well, I went, you know, there's, I think there's two sides to that particular com conversation. And I think what we're trying to do is not be the extreme one way or the other. Right. Some people say, Oh, I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not going to even consider the mistake or learn from it. I'm just moving on to then make it again. Right. And I think that sometimes that happens. And I think sometimes people dwell too much on the mistake. And so um, I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to, I can only, I usually have baking terms that I talk about this, but imagine let's say we're, we're driving to a, um, a place that we've never been before or maybe we've even been there before, but we just can't really remember how to get there. And we take a wrong turn, right? Now I could beat myself up and sit there and dwell on the fact that I took the wrong turn and just sit in my car and pound on the steering wheel, right? Or I can say, okay, so how, where am I, where do I wanna go Where's my destination at? How far am I from that destination? And then make a couple changes to my course and then keep driving. What, how is that any different than this journey of optimal health or anything else you do in life? You know, I mean, you want to analyze because you're probably going to be driving to that lo location again. And if you don't analyze how you got off track, then you'll probably do it again. So I think there's some value, um, um, not to beat ourselves up, but to consider how we got to where we're at and consider the fact that it's not where we wanted to be. Learn from it, make some, actually, first of all, is you realize what wasn't right, make a, a correction, and then you, you move forward. And I think that's the key there, analyze, make the correction and then act on that and not stay beating yourself up, but not, can not just disregard the mistake entirely. Um, what are some personal, I know you guys are having some thoughts and some examples in your head and I'd love to toss that around. Carrie, you haven't, um, Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I know she's got the kids running around, but do you have some uh, conversation around this this morning? Would you like to share? I always have conversation. Um, I, I talk to a lot of people who get stuck and completely beat themselves up and want to give up hope. Um, one I talked to on Wednesday, and I had a reminder in the last year, she's fluctuated between 10 pounds, but there's no way she'll ever get back to the 50 pounds plus that she was before. And just trying to redirect to the positive instead of expecting perfection. Um, because like you've said before, you know, the five and one is simple and the real coaching and the real community kicks in when you're making the daily decisions on the real food that you're facing and social and all those things. And so um, I've just mostly been listening in on this with notes in mind. 
of how to respond. I do feel like it's a, a pretty continual talking off the ledge of just giving up. And then there's other people that it just clicks and they do great. But yeah, so that's what's going through my mind. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Martin, I know you've been coaching for quite a while and you haven't shared with us. Do you have any conversation around this? You have to unmute yourself though. But part of my conversation was learning how to unmute. Yeah, there you go. No, just in some of what you're what everyone was sharing, it it reminded me of a a story in how to get negative things out of our lives. And I was visiting a friend down in Phoenix years ago and I was borrowing their car and they had a GPS in their car and I wasn't adept at setting the GPS. So I put my address in there incorrectly. And now it, this lovely voice reminded me after every intersection that I needed to make a different turn because I was lost and not finding it. And so to get this negative voice out of my head that was causing me frustration because I was also listening to the radio station, which I enjoyed. And I was, I don't know, driving for 10 minutes of hearing this gal, turn here, turn here. No, you missed it, turn here. I just decided to get the negative voice out of my life and just turn them off. So my solution was, it's causing me more anxiety and frustration than it's worth. Um, I kind of know where I'm going. So how can I, how can I change this? Um, my current environment, my current level of frustration and feeling like a failure is, well, I don't have to listen to them anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, and in the, in the end, the, uh, oh, did you, were you done? No. And so, well, I was going to say, and so how does that, you know, come to the present when we're, when we're working on our own healthy journey and we have um, temptations or we have stimuli that maybe is in our best interest. Mm -hmm. When you, one of the things you said there that was interesting is that you actually set the GPS to the wrong location to begin with. So had that have been, so going back and analyzing the, all the steps, setting the GPS to the right location would then have been giving you the proper cues to get to the proper location and then you may have still turned it off but at least it wasn't going contrary to what you well, knew was true yeah i could have set it up i wasn't adept at using that technology yet and i kind of winged my way instead of finding out the proper way to do it and it just added it piled on to the it had a pile on effect got it yeah that makes sense awesome well, that's a great discussion here this morning, guys, and I'm going to stop with my, the live video. So if you want to, um, if you want to join us live, you're going to have to show up uh, for the rest of this or watch it on podcast. Thanks for joining us. Um, the, uh, the other thing that they, they brought up was this, um, somebody asked about a ketogenic diet and, um, and they had a, a ketogenic is kind of a new sort of diet that has a similar type of fat burn kind of feel to it. Um, but one of the things that they talked about is that it seems to be more of a weight loss trick program than a lifestyle change program. And I know that we all know that a, a diet trick will only get you the, I don't even know where that'll get you, but it only gets you temporary results, right? And so the idea of having something that's it's not really a trick, but it's actually um, um, ours is a process of building habits. And those, when those habits are secure, um, they'll, they'll fight for you. Um, Daniela, you had your uh, hand up, did you? I think she may have gone. Okay. She just doesn't have her hand up anymore. So, um, oh, there you go. There you are. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So um, I don't know if I, what I was thinking about was um, what Martin was saying and then a previous comment that you had made um, with that idea of grace, just because I have um, a, a couple of clients where uh, that, that term grace is, it almost becomes their excuse, right? And so it, it's about asking the, the questions that help them challenge their definition of grace, right? Because if, if we just say, well, I'm allowing myself grace, well, 
that's good because like you said, we're not beating ourselves up, but at the same time, uh, we need to take it that next step forward and say, well, what, what does grace mean to you and how is it serving you? Mm, that's really good. How is the grace serving you? Yeah. If you keep making the same mistake, I, I, when people say don't play the comparison game, when I hear those words and I just listen to the statement, I don't agree with that at all. I, I'm actually fully against you all. Uh, comparison is a very, very important thing when you're just comparing this to that. You know, you can try, you can try something. You can try two gallons of milk. One's been in your fridge for six months, and one's been in your fridge for two weeks. And you are going to use a comparison, right? This one smells different than this one. That comparison is very appropriate and effective, <laughs> right? And so when we compare ourselves to, the, to what we wanted to get, the outcome that we wanted, um, that's, and we didn't measure up, but we didn't get there, I stopped short of the finish line, and I can compare my, where I finished to where I wanted to finish. They're not the same thing. What was missing? And see, that's the, I think there's the jump right there, is in our minds we go to, I suck, versus what was missing. Alex, I know you have some conversation around this, <laughs> so I yeah. want to toss it over to you. Can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. My internet connection is a little unstable this morning, so forgive me. Yeah, so the thoughts and the dialogue in our head are so powerful, and sometimes it's easy to focus on what other people think or what other people say, um, and that fear of that, but really, it's, it's how we process our own thoughts. And I love how you're exposing that comparison isn't good or bad. It's how you use it. It's, it's what we sell ourselves on. And we, we have more power than we give ourselves credit for. And these kind of conversations that we're on right now help expose that truth. Um, if you knew how great you were created to be, we would live up to it. It's just a matter of awakening to that. Um, I could go further, Craig, but I really think I just want to hang on the thought process. It's, it's how we use it. It's not good or bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and just like I was saying, um, if you were, has any, you probably all baked something that didn't turn out and you've baked something that did turn out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the process of when it doesn't turn out, what if the thing, what if, um, let's just say just for simplicity, the brown, one brownie set of brownies turned out and one set of brownies didn't turn out. Or even like one of the Metafast pancakes. Sometimes you mix those things up and you put those in the pan and they turn into a ball of goo. And sometimes they're a perfect pancake, mm -hmm. right? And I know you guys know that, right? And so do you think you suck when it turns into a ball of pancake or you think something just wasn't right? Maybe I, I, shook, it two, I shook it five times instead of two times. Or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I want to just just on that, just expanding specifically on that. It's so powerful for us to just to come back into the present moment. Like again, not living like, oh, I messed these up. This sucks. These brownies are horrible. That's it. That's something we can get taught to do and pick that up from mothers and fathers and different people that we learn from. Um, but really, it doesn't serve us. It doesn't help us. But the question is, what do I really want? I want good tasting brownies. What was missing? right? What happened? <laughs> Did I follow the directions? Is there something else? I need? Who's an expert at making brownies that I know of? Oh, so-and-so. Can I give them a call? Can I make a tweak or an adjustment? It, like Thomas Edison said, he really loved that he discovered so much during all the mistakes that he made. You know, we've all heard the how many times it took to make a light bulb thing. Have you heard that before? Does anybody remember how many times it took Thomas Edison approximately before he could get a light bulb to properly work? Anybody want to work that out? Yeah, I don't know. A line with a bunch of zeros. Yeah, it was like 10,000. It's approximated around 10,000 failures. I guess everybody hasn't heard it. So I'm glad I just put that out there. Um, so, well, his perspective was amazing because people thought, you better quit. You better quit, Thomas. You're like this, you're wasting your time. And they said, why do you keep going? It's like ridiculous for you to keep going at this. It's not going to happen. He goes, no, no. I know 9,500 ways not to make a light bulb now. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going this way. 
when his factory burnt down that was estimated in today's dollars of multiple, multiple millions of dollars. That's what it's worth. It was worth the time when it burnt down. He was standing outside and a reporter caught this because he was a famous guy. Oh my goodness, Thomas, your, your building is on fire. He's standing on the hillside gazing at it. And the report was is that his quote was, isn't it the most spectacular thing you've ever seen? Look at the way that the lights are lighting up. He saw interest and curiosity in the failure. His, his laboratory with all his life's work had been burned up. There's no data hard drive to back up any of it. It's gone. He says, I have a clean slate to create with now. What, what, what can I do next? So you triggered a lot in me when you asked that question, question, Craig. So when the brownies go wrong, you know, or if something doesn't turn out right with our weight loss, do we get curious and interested as to what do we learn from that? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I love that word. Ooh, that's really good. Are we curious mm -hmm. about why we didn't get what we wanted? Mm -hmm. What do we do with that curiosity? Mm -hmm. Man, that's, a, that's a fabulous word. Alex nailed that. Well, I've had a lot of mentors pouring into me right now, so these are these are a culmination of people. Yep. Yeah. So so that's the um that's the kind of the topic here. We kind of morphed from the, the support call into uh, why our program is valuable, even into a ketogenic diet, which is an example of one that may may offer one specific thing, um, but doesn't offer the lifestyle change. And I'm certain nobody on planet Earth will only wants to do a diet, right? I mean, I guess, I guess some bodybuilders might be doing a temporary diet for a specific thing. But when we're trying to become healthy, nobody wants temporary health. That's what I'll say. I've never talked to somebody who would only like to feel good for a little while. And so when we do a program that's only designed to be a temporary thing, and when it's regarding our health, is that, have we thought through that? You know, like if there's no lifestyle program, why would you do it? So, and then we uh, talked a little bit about beating ourselves up versus reflecting and then seeing, being curious about what was missing and then going and finding that and adding, adding to it. Terry Miller said a very powerful thing. She said, if your weight comes back on, it means you're missing something. You need it. You're missing a skill. Go find it and pack it in there. Right? It's just you're just stacking skills. And when you get enough skills so that the results you're getting are what you want, then you then, then you go into the mo maintaining those skills and then growing some new things. And I just it wasn't about beating yourself up. She says, Oh, your weights come back up. Obviously, you you don't have this something. There's there's an ingredient missing. Let's find it and, and pack it in there. Mm -hmm. And so um, and so that brings me to this last little section here as we talk um, for those of you that are a uh, senior coach or above we have a little tool called uh, a monthly action plan and it's it's essentially a recipe that you're going to cook for your health coach practice for the next 30 days and at the during, you know, it's almost like you want to taste the recipe midway to see is this tasting like it's supposed to at this time. And so halfway through the month, you can analyze, am I moving forward with my goals? Are things progressing? Have I done the actions that I needed to have the outcome at the end of the month that I want, right? And so our, our map is a way to um, take what we did last month make a few tweaks, add them to this month, and then start to work our plan. And uh, uh, one of the things that I find the most valuable after I've created my map is to look at it. Imagine if I could take some time, and I know Alex, you just smiled right there. Because <laughs> if you, imagine if you created this great recipe and then you stuck it in a drawer and then you tried to go bake, you tried to, you may forget that you actually were gonna bake anything, right? And so the, the value there of having the map available and in your face allows you to do immediate recall of what the action was. And you don't have to go into the filing cabinet in your brain and say, what was next? You know, you had such a reaction to that, Alex. I'd love to hear your conversations around it. Well, there's two things I think about. One is, you know, I want to make sure this conversation we're having is really relevant to the, everyone on this team. You know, we are here really looking to move our lives and other people's lives forward 
And so anything we talk about, I want to make sure we connect with why this map is important. Well, mm -hmm. we all know what a map is good for. It's, it's good for getting you from where you're at to where you want to go in the most effective way possible. It's there to help you get back on track when you're off track. Um, if you forget to look at the map and you make a wrong turn, you can go back to it. And if the map's out of date, you can update it and check in to, to make some connections. So my thoughts are, since we know the relevance or the importance of a map, um, does it make sense for us to create the habit of actually using it? So we don't have to think so much about it, and it's not a burden to us, but it's actually a gift. Um, my thought, again, I smiled, Craig, because I fought the map <laughs> when it first came out. I fight about everything, structure-wise or system-wise. It's, it's another thing. Dave Blanchard, who's been mentoring Take Shape for Life, said this, 95 to 97% of Take Shape for Life coaches, that's us, surveyed on their intentional creation assessment that was done, 1,900 of them. So there's 1,900 assessments of Take Shape for Life coaches that were done. 95 to 97% of them hate structure in their life. They don't like being told this is how we do it. That's a problem when we have all these great tools. And it's funny, um, these things are a gift to us. So there's a way to tweak this, but I want to go back and just tell you, the reason why I smiled, Craig, is because the map actually is what keeps me focused. It's what makes my life a whole lot easier. But I really fought, again, to make it a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, um, I appreciate that. So in whatever, if you're not at Senior Coach, you know, you still have your, your to-do things. That What's the next action? What's the next thing I want to do? And so whatever that is, is it written down and do you pay attention to it? Do you look at it? Do you care about helping? Do you care about what this program does for you and what it can do for others? If you do, then you might consider that. Uh, last week, one of the things that I did <clears throat> is I used at the end of this call at, at five minutes to 10, I wanted to remind myself to ask you guys a question. And so I put it in on, as a reminder on my phone, and it just popped up. It's in the, 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 um, the reminders um, application. It's part of the iPhone. And it just reminded me about this. And this was something that I did last week that I forgot about until just now. And so I'm telling that you that because I put something into place that would, that would remind me. And the reminder was... Um, Go around the, the meeting this morning and ask everybody for one action item based upon today's call that you're going to do. If you have two, that's fine. Keep them to yourself. I only want one, right? And, and then next week we'll say, did you act on that? Because I know there's something that's popped in your head that said, oh, I need to do that. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, I wish I could, right? So I'm going to call on everyone here. So be prepared and think about it. it. And this isn't to like, oh, manufacture something. There is something that came up. We covered a lot of contact today. So I'm going to start with Angela. What is a one, one thing that you are willing to challenge yourself to do this week based upon anything heard here today? Um, I need to offer myself more grace. More grace. Okay. Thank you. How about you, Carrie? I think I haven't done my map for October yet. Okay. So that would be a pretty good idea since it's tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then uh, also be in touch with my coaches before the morning of this huddle so oh. that they are on it. Because some of them join, but others could plan and make it. Yeah. Exactly. Last minute, so. That's great. And so um, set a time frame. If you guys can, if you can make Friday like the half hour after this call available for 30 minutes of focus. So, Angela, can you give yourself grace for the next 30 minutes, right? Or find a way that you're going to consider giving yourself grace. Gary, bust out your map if you can within 30 minutes and then set some type of a way to remind your coaches, right? And, and really, if you just spend another 30 minutes now, oh, you'll be you thank yourself. Alex, you're up. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's going to be um, getting two three-way Zoom calls scheduled with either you or Terry. Um, and 
with potential um, uh, coach candidates. And then of course, client story calls. Mm -hmm. That's, that's pretty much where it's at for me. So two, so you work on those in the next, in the next 30 minutes, possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I have to. Mm -hmm. Good. Great stuff. Martin, you're up. I unmuted you. Activity. Activity. So is there one specific activity you'd like to make based on what you heard? Basically action. Because as we look back and go, well, wow, my results really didn't change much. I had this beautiful map and it's still going to be beautiful next month because it's the same one that it was last month. Uh -huh. And what, what was the one constant of, or the constant in that? And it's daily, it's being in action, it's daily action. Mm -hmm. so, so name one action you're going to take in the next 30 minutes. The next 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. Other than the client call. Uh, you have a client call set? I have a client call set. Just engage in, do some engagement in Facebook. Uh, okay. Create some, you know, start some conversations. So how about three Facebook conversations and one client, client call in the next 30 minutes? Yeah, sweet. Linda, you're up. Me? Yes, sir. This Linda? Okay. <laughs> I'll take, sir. Um, uh, Craig was talking, you were talking about it earlier, but um, it's funny. A client just texted me this morning and said, This program is, I love how easy this program is. This, <sighs> it makes it so simple. And she already took a before and after five days in, and she can see a difference. So following up with a text, using the language that uh, we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember exactly what you said, Craig. Maybe yeah. After. Who could you help if they knew how great you feel on the, about this program? Okay. So that's my action step. Is Sweet. I'm going to respond to that with that. All right. Daniela, you're up. So um, I think I self-voted myself probably the queen of structure resistance. So... Um, <laughs> Well, and, and I've been working on that um, very intentionally, but I think my next step with it, um, just from hearing uh, a lot of different things that were said today, my next step is to actually put in my calendar a time to dig into your schedule and Alex's schedule and Terry's if need be to, um, to schedule my own personal uh, mentorship and to schedule those three ways so that they actually um, happen ahead of time instead of me thinking about them and talking with the client about them that week and it doesn't work for them so really putting that structure in place so it's set the the week prior hopefully mm -hmm. so if you took the next 30 minutes you've got calls that are coming up with your clients for next week that you know about already right well, I had them already, but I'm, I am now going to get into motion of, um, I have a nice relationship with most of my clients to just be able to text and say, they've heard the conversation. They know this is going to happen. So yeah. just texting some options to them and getting that going mm -hmm. this week. So they're in place for next week. Yeah. So I would say if you had minimum of three next week, would that be satisfying to you? Um, yes, I think, um, actually at this point for me, scheduling one, one. that's a mentorship for me and then two with, uh, clients that would be, okay. that would be awesome. So you got three, that was three. Perfect. Yeah. Great. Daniela. That's awesome. All right. Um, let's see now the, the other people here are, uh, don't have their camera on, but if you can talk, um, uh, yep. Diane, you were coming next. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, listening to what Alex had to, had to say, um, you know, for me and what, um, not just Alex, but um, Daniela about, you know, structure resistance. Oh my gosh. I mean, just the hearing you talk about it, I feel it in my gut. <laughs> it's pretty awful. But um, anyway, so um, for me, you know, embracing the discussion, the uncomfortable stuff because usually that where that resistance is is the blockage to my next step forward so i need to embrace it and look at it as an opportunity to grow my business and grow myself personally and be a better coach to my health coaches so one of the things i wrote down on my 
one page productivity planner, which is on my face staring at me every single day is get my map to Alex, which usually I'm about a week late every month. Right, Alex? I mean, you can admit it because I can. Um, so that's one of the things. And um, um, I'll also do at least two three-way calls with um, Alex or yourself, Craig. One of them's already scheduled with you, Craig. So, but yeah, those are going to be the two big things for me this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Diane, I've been, there's been a, well, you can see all these boxes. There's all these things that I got to do. And like last, this last weekend, there was all this packing I had to do because there was this eminent date happening on Tuesday where these people were showing up to move my belongings from one location to another. And I was, I kept dreading doing the packing of the boxes. And I told myself, this is something that really helped me. I said, but when they're packed, then I'm going to feel a relief because then someone else is going to move them. And so I started thinking about what was around the corner, not just the corner. And so for you, as you're thinking about this action plan and this map, and there's a burden to it, but once the map is created, then you get the value of it being created. Mm -hmm. And so if you can just move your thought processes just another inch ahead to the other side of it being done, you'd be like, ah, oh, it's like the uphill. And if I can just get to the top, oh, it's a tough uphill. Yeah, but think about the downhill. Mm -hmm. Oh, the downhill's fun. Okay, I'm going to get to the top of that. That's been helping me uh, sometimes on an hourly basis these last few days. <laughs> I just yeah. keep thinking about when that box is empty, it's empty. You know. Yeah, I get that. I get that. I just went through a move. So I, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. So tap into that. What's around the corner? Because there's that hard work. Hard work always has a payoff. Mm -hmm. Always. It's the way it's designed. Well, and I think when I do them, I, I, some, it triggers something. And I, I don't know, maybe you can put it more into words than I can. But it's like it's the current reality. And your brain sees it. And it starts creating what your next steps are and how to, you know, I always do better um, in my business when I'm doing it. So why aren't I doing it all the time? You know what I mean? It's stupid, really. <laughs> it's on the value and the benefit. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Diane. Yeah. Debbie, are you able to have something for us? Um, yes. Uh, I've got, I was, I, I've spoke to Alex about this and I have somebody that I have been wanting to have a conversation with and um, I've been putting it off yeah. and that's what I want to commit to is having that conversation. Mm -hmm. So in the next 30 minutes, can you schedule the, do you have, is this something you need to schedule or something you can just have? Um, she's here at work. So oh. I'll probably have to approach her at lunchtime. Uh -huh. So it's not going to happen in the next half an hour, but uh -huh. um, also an email to a woman that I met, um, at Nordstrom's that was interested. I need for that. I can do in the next 30 minutes. Okay. Is and start go, that conversation. Go get them and, and push through. You're going to love the down. Awesome. I love that analogy. That is so what I needed to hear. Okay. You know, I have to remind myself that all the yeah. time. It's because I am not, I am structure structurally resistant and, and, and I do look at things like a mountain and not a molehill and I just need to just do it. And that analogy of once that, just keep in mind that downhill, mm -hmm. then um, it'll make it a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Um, I think that's gonna, that's everyone. I think. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So, um, I will see you guys next week and um, push through, get that one thing done. And then when you're, when you did it, do a little happy dance. Your brain will, will thrive on that. Say, I did it. I trust me. Just wire your brain that way. I did it. And we'll see you guys next week. Yeah. Hey, Angela, can you,